I was a sculptor, and I was uh, I came to New York in 1973 because that was the the center of art in America, and uh, what I discovered was the evolution of graffiti before my eyes on the trains. And I thought that was far and away the most interesting art which is taking place in New York at that time. Well, most of the photos here that you see uh, are from my Blade collection, uh, Martha Cooper and Henry Chaffin's collection. And these photos that you see are the way the New York subways look back in the uh, late 70s, it was 1977, 78, 79, and 80 of uh, my Blade works in New York City. And of course, the ones that I'm most proud of uh, these are the ones that are from 1975, and that's uh, back when I was 18, and it shows how it was being in New York City, of how New York was, you know, at that time. My role in entering this culture was, um, was to assist with the documentation that they were already doing themselves. He shot from the point of view of an artist, I shot from the point of view of a journalist. Fuck your ass shut! It's obviously art, but at the same time, you know, it's vandalism. It is, you know what, it is vandalism, but that doesn't mean it isn't art. It can be art and vandalism. Uh, yeah, most people did not know at the time that that's what this was. It, it, they just saw graffiti and they just felt assaulted by graffiti and they hated graffiti. And that doesn't mean that once they found out it was a name they liked graffiti, but uh, most people didn't know. And it was interesting because it was exciting. And you knew that people who were doing it were taking risks of being arrested. And they were doing something rebellious, and something that society didn't want them to do. They were having a voice. And society likes the people in the, in the underclasses and who are you know, from the poor neighborhoods who have reason to be angry. They wanted them to be quiet. But what was wonderful about the emergence of graffiti is that people weren't taking it anymore. They weren't going to be quiet anymore. They were going to do something to make society understand that they were there and they existed and that these walls were theirs too. And the best thing that's about it is because it's a way to have a self-expression from inside, not through just through schools and books. And so it's something that's a self-taught thing from the people from the street. And it was an art form created by young people for young people. Let me tell you about the snakes, the fakes, the lies, the highs, and all of these industry shingdings. Will you see the pretty girls in the high? Martha has a background in anthropology, and I had an interest in anthropology, and so we both took that approach. This is, this is a subculture. They're making something. How do you make it? What, what are the ways, the historical sort of pieces to it and what are the kind of ethics to it and the sort of ideology about how you want it to be. And so we wanted to put all that in one book. So there it was. It was it became a Bible for people because it had all the information as well as very exciting pictures. Henry Chaffin actually was uh, taking photos of the trains through the late seventies into the early eighties and um, he wanted to meet the original old writers that helped invent the art form from back in 1971 and 72. And so he met myself, he met Phase 2 and Futura 2000. Out of all the writers of New York, we're the only three that are actually left that are still alive to actually show where the graph movement uh, came from. All the other, everyone else that came uh, along from my time period, they're all dead. Still doing the do at 52.